You know, I wanted to ask you if you could go back and do anything differently, whether it be coin collecting or silver stacking, would you have changed anything? SD Bullion is giving away a monster box of 2024 Tree of Life silver coins. Sign up today at sdbullion.com slash sweepstakes. Well, I'm here at the coin shop with one of my favorite people, Harry. It's great to Thank see you, you, Harry. Great to see you, Silver Dragons. We have done dozens of videos together. We've yeah. talked about silver stacking, strategies, coins, the markets, everything in between. But one thing we haven't really done is got to know you. Okay. So I was wondering if you could maybe take us back to when you first got into coins. What was that like? Well, I was a very little boy, probably younger than five years old, when coins came into my life, not as a collector, but watching my father. My father was uh, truly a vest pocket dealer at the time. He was a salesman, but on the side he did coins. And really from as young as I can remember, coins were a part of his life, therefore a part of our whole families. And he had this little office in the, in a, the back part of our house. and. Um, he had what my mother called his coin cronies. And the coin cronies just streamed in and out of the house from neighbor kids, one of whom is now uh, a coin dealer in San Luis Obispo, to a guy who died of a drug overdose not long after that. My dad was not a drinker, never drank alcohol in his life, but he had, um, he had this, in fact, this wooden cabinet, that was his liquor cabinet, which always means it had to have a place in the coin shop. Mm. But he would serve drinks to his adult coin cronies, as my mother called it. Coins is what my dad did. And therefore, as a little boy, you want to be like your dad. And so I gravitated to coins. I probably became a, a real collector at about seven, mm. you know, with the, with the Whitman folders and so forth. But um, prior to that, it was just as an observer. I remember my first Whitman album, which I still have, which was a penny book, Lincoln Sense, 1909 to 1940. And my mother would let me go through her change purse, but I could only take pennies or nickels that I needed. Mm -hmm. Nothing bigger because she needed it for grocery money. Those books were very, very important to me. And so those are the ones from the, from the distant past that I've actually kept. You know, I actually started with the Whitman scent album myself. Yeah, I think and, a lot of people did. Yeah, I mean, it was fun to go through change and try and find all the dates he didn't have and yep. look at the mint marks. So as a child, you were into the coins, you collected them. Uh, fast forward a bit, when did you start thinking about, all right, I need to start stacking silver because I know you were into Canadian silver and stuff like that. When was that? Way later. Okay. You know, I'm talking in my 50s. Oh, wow. When, um, I guess, 2009 to 11, there started to be a lot of uh, activity on YouTube based on the mainstream media talking about record prices of silver, conspiracies to just good old-fashioned knowledge. And so I started watching all those channels and got very, very uh, involved in not only watching, but I was a, a frequent commenter on those channels, back and forth. And I used, to, I used to get in nice conversations with some of the people who had content in those days. Well, it is a great community. And I came along much later, but the silver stacking community was very strong when I started my channel. I really enjoy talking with people in the comments as well. Yes. And you get to know people. You do. And most of the people who put out content were really, really good and, and smart people. And some of, the, uh, some of the incentive for the coin shop kind of that pushed me over came from just my interaction with some of those people. So you were stacking silver, you would say 2009? For sure, and gold. You know, I, I had this thing where every month I got paid and paid all our bills and whatever was left, I bought gold and silver with. So it became like this monthly routine. And I put together quite a lot of silver and gold 
at the time. Yeah, that's a good strategy. Just kind of dollar cost average, buy when you can afford more. Yeah, and, and not borrowing to buy or not hurting the family in any way. Just like, here's my new paycheck and I got this much left from last month. So all of it went into the metals. Yeah, that's a good strategy. So you were stacking and then when did the coin shop come on the horizon? Well, I've thought about a coin shop since 1984. It's a long time ago. I worked, as I said in a previous video, for a guy named Jonathan at Jonathan's Stamp and Coin. It was that experience that led me to realize that someday I would like my own shop. And I used to sit in meetings in my other career, and when the, when the lights went down and they would show whatever slide or whoever was speaking, I would always open a notebook and start planning the coin shop. I have at home drawings of the coin shop going back 30, 40 years of how the showcases would be laid out and what would be in each one of them. And it brought me a lot of peace, especially when I was stressed in my other job, to just plan the coin shop. But a lot of time went by, and it wasn't until I was actually 58 years old, approaching my 59th birthday, that I was on the phone with uh, a favorite nephew of mine, Jeremy, and telling him once again, this was June of 2015, I said, my Jeremy, I sure like to have a coin shop someday. And I'll edit out exactly what he said, but he said, Uncle Harry, I've been hearing about this coin shop for 20 years. When are you gonna blank and do it already? And that was June. So I said, okay, Jeremy, I'll do it by September. Well, I didn't do it by September because I couldn't find a place to rent. Mm. But I did do it by January 1st. We had opened the doors on, on January 1st, New Year's Day. Nobody came, but this place was open on 2016. So 2016, the coin shop opened. Yep. And we all know what it looks like now. Lots yeah. of cases full of coins. Was it basically like this when you pretty, opened? Pretty close. Um, if you go to the website, you can see pictures still from the original setup. One small difference is we added one more showcase over here. This showcase used to be 90 degrees this way, and that wasn't there. Mm. And I used to have, instead of plastic bins, there were cigar boxes on top, but essentially the layout was as you see it, the, the tables here, the desk, that's safe. The annex next door where we do all our online businesses wasn't there. Matter of fact, that was a beauty shop up yeah. until a year and a half ago. I remember when that got added. Yeah, yeah. In fact, you might have on some of your videos some of the interim construction. It's been quite the process to get to where it's at today, it seems like. Yeah, but it's been a fun process and uh, honestly, I, I feel grateful every day that I can actually go to work. I use work in quotations because I get to do coins and make a living at it. And I think most of the people that work here, if not all, would agree that, you know, even a bad day here, it's kind of like people who say a bad day fishing is a better than the best day working. I mean, we're, we get to do coins all day and it's not lost on me. I'm grateful. I'm humbled by the ability to do this to make a living. Well, it is fun being here and you know, Harry, sometimes I'll come, we'll do a video and I'll just hang out for a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's just fun to be here, isn't it? I it mean, is yeah, we want it to be a fun environment, but I, I do regret folks. I, I regret that I, I waited till I was 59 years old to make this happen. I'm gonna be 68 in a few months. So, you know, thank God I'm still able to do this, but I waited a long, long time. You know, I wanted to ask you if you could go back and do anything differently, whether it be coin collecting or silver stacking or anything like that. Would you have changed anything, started anything sooner? I mean, I know you mentioned the coin shop, but uh, anything as far as like collecting that type of stuff? I wish I would have tuned into the whole idea of stacking. The term didn't exist prior to around 2010 that I know of, but I wish I would have emphasized more the investment side for me and, and for my family because I was always more of a, a numismatist and a collector. I collected odd things like, um, well, US type, that's not too odd, but also Austrian tallers, you know, things that most coin shops never even get one. I was into all kinds of things like that. Also was a voracious and am a voracious reader about coins, anything to do with the coin business or coin history, all the publications, the books I've read, anything by Q. David Bowers. You know, so those things always occupied my time. While it's not a regret, I wish I had invested more as a younger man in the precious metals. Hmm. 
I think a lot of us feel that when we see the price going up, we're like, man, when silver was eight bucks, I should have loaded up more. <laughs> yeah. And you know, if, just on a personal note, if I can just say, this shop opened in 2016, but I came within millimeters of opening a shop in 2002. And just to share just a bit of personal information, I had the lease for the shop, for the, for the rental space on my desk at home and my marriage fell apart. Mm. And, you know, truthfully, I just, I, I was doing poorly. Let's just, let's just be generous to myself. I was doing poorly and uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't pull the trigger. I'd never signed the lease. I, I got, I got terribly sidetracked with divorce and all that goes with that. I regret that whole thing. However, I don't know that there was any other way around it. To give your all into a new business, you can't be burdened with that kind of a thing. 14 years earlier than this opened, this, this could have opened. On the other hand, Adrian, who's fantastic and a godsend to this shop, was just a little boy in 2002. The things that have made us successful here, and no small part is Adrian, wouldn't have been there. There was a plan and and I'm just glad that it finally happened. I'm glad it finally happened too, Harry. Yeah. And you got a great team, all the guys now, and yeah. it, it continues to grow. And you really have put together kind of the uh, superstar team for coins here. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting too that every single person that works here started out as a customer. It's kind of like a, a quiet interview process where it, you're not really interviewing for a job, but you, you get to know somebody over time. Adrian came in every single day for two years wow. before he ever worked here. Every single day at lunchtime. He worked right up the street at AAA. You get to know a person, for better or for worse, and you realize, I'd really like them here, hanging out. He was a great hire. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't think it's any secret. I mean, I'm not a young man. I think. I'm gratified to know that Harry's Coin Shop will go on into the future with Adrian and all the other guys too, hopefully, long after I'm done with the business. Well, it's good to know it has a future and it'll be around for a long time. I believe it will be, although only in a better form. You know, yeah. I think you look at a place like Heritage and they're a fantastic, enviable, world-class business. But I've been at this long enough, at least in the hobby, to remember when Heritage was just Steve Ivey rare coins and a guy named Jim Halperin had a shop in Dallas. I mean, it was just two coin shops that used to advertise in the magazines like Coin World. And now it's a worldwide organization called Heritage. So I'm not going to be a part of that future, but I think, who knows? I, I always tell Adrian, you know, Heritage, as wonderful as they are and all the other great companies, Stacks, Bowers, they've got nothing on you but time. That's true. Yeah. Speaking of Adrian, he just showed up. Adrian, we we're just talking about you. Oh, yeah. There's the future, folks, right there. <laughs> this will carry Harry's Coin Shop well into the future and to the to great heights. I'm sure of it. Is it always going to be Harry's Coin Shop? Always. It's Harry's legacy. I mean, it's it's what he's built and you know what he's worked hard for and just. I'm trying to be here to help as much as I can with everything. So. Yeah. Well, I, I love the name Harry's Coin Shop. I love being here. And I really appreciate the time, Harry, and all the knowledge and the wisdom. Oh, yeah. Come here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll be back. 